okay, do. so first up, coming soon, it's that CircuitPython 8 poster. It talked about, thank you so much, Espressive, for uh, going on this journey with us, letting us get this art approved and more. It'll be in the store shortly. Yeah. We'll have a limited number. That is the poster. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, it's an update. Uh, it's a uh, two times AA battery holder, but here's the thing I really like. It's got this like built-in mechanical switch, which I think is wonderful for educational projects. Um, but we had people who wanted to use these in breadboards or they want to use them in Play-Doh or whatever. They wanted like the premium ends that, um, you know, you didn't, like we had like bare ends before. Uh, so we just got these updated. They now have premium ends on them. Wonderful for a breadboard project. Uh, or you can just stick them in any kind of material um, and they'll just do a better job at uh, staying in place because they've got nice tips. Okay, next up. Um, next up, this clear tag, which we originally had in My Fair Classic, we now also have in NTAG 203. Uh, this is the new, you know, My Fair fancy version. Um, Classic is less supported these days. Um, I recommend you go to NTAG 203. Only the oldest stuff will not support NTAG. It requires My Fair Classic. Honestly, uh, every phone that's made in the last like five, ten years uh, wants NTAG more than My Fair. So. Uh, pick these up. They physically look the same, but they have a different chip inside. Next up, and this is what the code was based on, micro adapter. Yeah, this is a little micro adapter. Um, well, you, you, know, you asked for something like this. Basically, um, if you have you know, an old laptop or a computer with USB um, A connector, uh, this will just adjust it into USB C. Uh, it's just very slim. It's a little micro. It's, yes. it's actually meant to be embedded in a product, um, which is why it's kind of like a little like low body looking. Um, yeah, this is, you know, you want it as small as you could possibly get. It's it. a little skeletal, but it, it does work quite well. And then, you know, you have a reversible USB connection instead of a uh, USB-A. So it's a little port adapter. Next up. Um, next up we have from Espressif, which, uh, you know, again, uh, they've been rocking out with us. Uh, this is the S3 box uh, light. Uh, so it does not come with a dock. It's basically the same as the S3 box before. But there's just it's a little less expensive. There's no dock that comes with it. It's a little box with I think like a two-inch screen, three buttons. Um, you know, you've got you know we're just showing here a little animation of um, scrolling through some of the capabilities. Um, I can show real fast, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll plug this into my USB-C Y adapter. Uh, so you go to the overhead and I'll. I'll demo this. Yeah, I figured I'd show some of the photos. Yes. You ready? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so it's got uh, USB-C, it's got this screen. I plug this in. Shows a little animation, which is cute. So this is the built-in demo. Of course, you can program it. It's the ESP32 S3. Uh, so it's got like a little, like a L, it looks like a um, uh, LG, LVGL graphics demo. Um, it's got a media player and like you can actually uh, play music, which I'll then pause so we don't get uh, YouTube complaints. Oh, weird. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. Let's slow down. Um, so you get a little like a control I if, surface. Uh, I, th I, think, I think that's oh. interfering with something. Whoops. Yeah. Oh boy, I broke everything. Sorry. We're back. That was exciting. <laughs> Did we mention this is live? Hold yeah. on, let me get this back into. Okay. There you go. Um, and then uh, help, and there's a little, little documentation. Basically, it's a little um, all-in-one box that has sensors, speaker, little mounting holes, um, slots you can plug in stuff with an ESP32 S3. So if you just want to get a project up and running really fast uh, from Espresso, um, this is a, uh, a quick way to, uh, to get started with your ESP32 S3 project. Uh, there's I ESP, ESP IDF support, and I think we actually added CircuitPython support for this board as well. Next up. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Um, you know, we, we didn't stock a lot of these. These are um, Hall Effect, uh, di like a dimmer um, knobs. So they look like potentiometers, but they're, they're faders. Um, often you've seen these in AV control panels and they're like kind of fancy and nice or like aeronautic stuff. Um, so this is like a very smooth motion uh, that goes back and forth. It's not a potentiometer. Inside is a Hall effect sensor, uh, which will send, uh, and a little bit of circuitry that'll send out a linear voltage 
on the yellow wire. So you do have to power it with five volts and ground. Um, and then you get a, uh, a linear voltage out. Um, it's got like this really nice motion. It's got mounting holes uh, and there's a diagram. It's just like really, really nice. Um, and it's meant to last for like decades. So, uh, you know, again, often used in AV equipment where it cannot fail because you're, you're fading between uh, live and recorded and you can't mess that up. Um, and it's not a potentiometer. So whatever you have this controlling needs to be able to take an analog voltage in. That said, you know, it's kind of a nice interface. Um, it's got, you know, a nice bearing and everything. Um, it's got a very smooth feel. I feel like if you want something like this, you know, motion or action, there's really nothing other than one of these fader knobs to do it. So, um, you know, if you're creating an interface and you want it to be really nice, I know these are a little expensive, but I think they're worth it. Um, and they definitely have a really good build quality to them. All right. And the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our team, our staff, our employees, our friends, the community, our customers, all y'all, is this. A breadboard. But it's a premium breadboard. Uh, people have asked for these. So we had the large breadboard um, in premium style and now this one. So basically we've had breadboards for a while and they were okay, they were good. But this is like a really, really nice breadboard. So basically I went to a bunch of different factories and I said, look, I really want a smooth insert. Uh, I, don't, I want the clips to have um, these fancy clips that they make that are nickel plated, that they don't uh, have the annoyance of like, sometimes you have to wiggle a board to get it in, that you don't have to do that anymore because they're actually um, split apart and uh, with, with a little notch in them. Um, and uh, everything is lined up very nicely so that when you want to insert a board or remove a board, it's like a very smooth um, motion. So like here's your standard feather and it just goes in very mm -hmm. smoothly, like each time, every time, um, you know, you want to plug in wires. Oops. They plug in very easily without difficulty, but they're also um, in place. I also wanted to change the marking from blue to black because I kind of like black ground red yeah. power, I don't know. And um, another thing that is fancy about these is um, they come with a metal plate. So uh, if you would like to not have the um, sticky back that could possibly rip and be annoying, uh, you basically put the plate on the back. The back, this can also help with um, EMI, or at least I learned that in school. I don't know if it's actually true. Um, but also make for a very nice uh, solid um, backing. You can connect them together, of course, if you want to like stick, you know, they, they have little nubs on the side so you can stick them side to side. Um, but basically if you're ever really annoyed of like breadboards that are like, oh, it's really hard to put stuff in and remove it. Um, these are buttery smooth. So buttery smooth breadboards are here. All right, just new products.